Greetings, um, I'm Valerie Fletcher, I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Human Centered Design, and I'm going to share one of my global experiences with you um, in the form of presentations by International Design Award winners from the International Association for Universal Design International Design Awards Program. And this is from 2022. Um, I have had the privilege of serving on the board, and I also serve as an annual juror. So I know this process intimately, but I have not had a chance to share it. So this is my first opportunity to do so. Please enjoy a lot of stories about what these companies and individuals have done to interpret their idea about inclusive design and the difference it can make in people's lives. The stories that you'll hear are as varied as uh, one of the largest banks in the world, a Norwegian architecture firm, uh, Shiseido, one of the elite makeup companies uh, that all of us know from uh, Japan, uh, and some extraordinary technology stories from a wealth of Japanese companies, in many cases that they've competed every year in this international awards program. Um, please enjoy the experience. Uh, if you listen to all of it, watch all of it. It'll take close to an hour. Feel free to watch as much as you're interested in seeing. Thanks very much. We are uh, incredibly honored to receive this award and would like to express our sincere gratitude for the organizers for recognizing our work. It is truly humbling to be recognized by our peers in the industry and to receive such a prestigious award. Metropolis Architecture and Design is one of Norway's leading interior architect firms, established in year 2000. The firm consists of 37 creative and ambitious interior architects and specializing in creating an innovative sustainability, sustainable spaces. We work with a variety of projects, including residential buildings, commercial spaces, offices, cultural institutions, and urban planning. Inclusive and universal design is always integrated into our projects to provide better solutions for all needs. Campus Kronstad at Western Norway University of Applied Sciences is a pioneer in acknowledging the need for inclusive design and has become a popular place that inspires learning for everyone, both during and after school hours. Campus, no, sorry. The project consists of two parts, K1 and K2. For the K1 part of the project, we collaborated with the architect firm HLM Architected, and for the K2 part of the project, the collaboration was with the architect firm L2 Architects. Campus Kronstad started in year 2002 as a long-term project before universal design was formally required. Startspeak was a pioneer in acknowledging the need for inclusive design and in seeing possibilities rather than barriers. The premise of the site was the old workshop of Norwegian State Railway's large buildings, covering 52,000 square meters of railway tracks and old gates. The objective was for the, builders, for the buildings to be preserved and to connect the three different institutions in a coherent way, and not the least to create inclusive environment that invites learning and socializing for everyone. Sorry, uh, the K1 project is old and new buildings with library, cafeteria, lecture rooms, and offices for professors and other employees. K2 is a new building housing activity-based workspaces for employees, student cafe, lecture halls, learning lab, and not the least, an open atrium, the Garden of Eden. A garden for student study groups and individual work. The focus on universal design is reflected in the overall written strategy of this comprehensive project, involving restoration and preservation of the unique features of cultural heritage. The key word for the project was connect, 
connection between old and new, past and future, small and large. The project prioritized universal design through involving diverse user groups, including those with disabilities. The school and user groups actively committed to the design process from start to finish, embracing new ideas and our ambition for inclusion, clarity, accessibility, and good design. The dialogue through, throughout the process led to better solutions and successful end result. Campus Kronsta is a great example of how biophilic design can be incorporated into educational institutions. In the design, we have focused on the connection to nature through the use of natural materials, biophilic patterns, different textures, plants, green spaces, and natural light. All these elements work together to create a space that promotes positive mental and physical health for all users. The architects wanted as much light as possible with as low energy consumption as possible and created area um, created atria between each of the seven departments. The atria filled the university college with natural light, which improves mood, productivity, and sustainability. To reduce the need for focus light, contrasting elements were used where possible, such as doors in contrast with walls, flooring, reeds, furniture, etc. The campus has a simple and step-free circulation pattern for easy movement between and within the buildings. Clear wayfinding is achieved through open transitions between indoor and outdoor spaces. Neat and well-placed guidelines, use of tactile markings, braille and contrasting signage. Floor and room numbers are enlarged for better visibility, and the absence of thresholds enables easy access for everyone. The use of natural in nature-inspired sound absorbent elements is incorporated into the architecture, creating good acoustics for a comfortable sound environment to be in. Even with many presents, our calm and relaxed atmosphere prevails in the common areas. An example of this is the library. By covering a whole wall with a sound observing artwork, we were able to, care, to create a more open space while still having a good soundscape. This way, we could also bring in the daylight in a greater way. A focus for us in both projects has been to create good meeting places, areas for the students to both work and socialize. The result is flexible furnishing that meets the needs for everyone. We suggested a mix of soft lounge, lounge furniture and group tables, as opposed to traditional study hall furnishing. This furniture helped create different zones and invites users to spend time at the university in several different ways. The use of color in the K1 building is inspired by the cargo trains, breaking up the long corridors and creating a playful contrast to otherwise neutral interiors. The outside of the stairwells is black and therefore recognizable and easy to locate. The colorful furniture has the same concept. In the K2 building, we used wooden materials to create a natural feel and warm contrast to the harder surfaces and black details. The shape of the atrium is easy to understand and makes wayfinding natural. Uh, this reduces the need for guidelines as the handrail itself guides you through the space. The use of glass and transparency in the building represents the openness the school stands for. Students and employees have a good visual contact. By consciously and seemingly, seamlessly, seamlessly, sorry, incorporating universal design principles, we have created an inviting and appealing university. Campus Kronsta has become a place that is more accessible and inclusive for all members of, of the community, regardless of their physical or cognitive abilities. In the post-corona situation, we need to attach to the, to the physical site. Designing space to bring people together and to prevent loneliness among students in particular is even more important than before. 
Towards the end, we want to mention two other projects where universal design has been a priority from the start. Britannia Hotel in Norway is a project where the will and focus on universal design was with us from the start. It is a luxurious hotel where we want to make all the guests feel included and able to have an equal experience while staying there. This plan shows the tower suite where the shower is suitable for wheelchairs and also a lux luxurious shower for two. The marble wash basins can help to adapt that can be adapted to all heights. IBM Norway headquarters. Uh, in this project, the main focus was to gather everyone in one breakout area. This contributes to a better and closer cooperation across the business units, creating a stronger team and winning culture. Inclusion of accessible accessibility features such as ramps, lifts, handrails were an important part of the design of the central garden, the heart of the office. Universal design should not be just about adapting for those with special needs, but about creating an inclusive environment for all users, and thus good design and architecture for everybody. Thank you for your attention. Arigato. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, firstly, a massive thank you for uh, the nomination. We're hugely honored and, and proud to, to be recognized as such a prestigious event. And my congratulations to, of course, all the, all the winners today and, and uh, people who nominated uh, or put something forward. Um, I'm Mali, I head up digital experience and accessibility for HSBC. For those of you who can't see me, uh, I'm an Asian man in my 30s. Uh, for those of you who can see me, please feel free to tell me I look a lot younger. Um, just a little bit about HSBC and then the Digital Accessibility Hub. So um, HSBC is a bank. We operate across 62 countries. We have 40 million uh, customers and about 225,000 staff. Uh, as an organization, uh, digital accessibility is essential for us as a business. Um, you know, last year, over 90% of the, the transactions that we, we uh, facilitated were done online. So actually making sure that everything that we do is accessible is essential to our business to ensure not only uh, do you know, some customers have access to our digital products and services, but actually all our customers have access to our digital products and services. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what digital accessibility is, what our ambition as an organization is, and then I'm going to demonstrate the digital accessibility hub as well. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and jump straight into it. So our vision is really simple, guys. We want to be the world's most digitally accessible bank. And to be really explicit about what that means, we want to be the bank of choice for disabled and neurodiverse customers. And we want to be the employer of choice for disabled and neurodiverse staff. In terms of what accessibility is, it's really quite simple. Um, it is making a digital thing work for somebody who's either disabled or, or neurodiverse. Um, and it's something we, we blend into all our products and services. Historically, we've focused on making sure our websites, apps, uh, transactional platforms work for our customers. But last year, we also started transforming all our internal systems, things like our learning, our staff websites, uh, we've even done things like make our screensavers accessible, but of course, we have some way to go. So, a little taster for the accessibility hub. So, guys, for an organization of our size, we have a huge IT community, and making sure that our people have the right technical skills to deliver accessible products and services across the world is, is quite a challenge. So we train about 2,000 people a year, and we hope to take that number to about 5,000 at the end of this year. Uh, that's primarily HSBC staff. I would say about 80 HSBC staff, 80% uh, HSBC, but uh, the remaining 20% are non-HSBC uh, employees. So we, we give our training away freely. But really what we wanted to do is, is ramp up that number uh, significantly. And that's what the Accessibility Hub allows us to do. Um, it also 
uses data at its heart. So what it does is we looked at the 10 most common mistakes we made when we build uh, websites or apps for somebody who's either disabled or neurodiverse, and we create the story around Rachel. So Rachel is somebody who has MS, uh, and we're going to watch uh, the first opening video as she goes through uh, the process of online dating. Hi, I'm Rachel, I'm 38. Delete, I'm 38. I'm in my 30s. <laughs> I run a PR business with my best friend Charlotte and I have multiple sclerosis, or MS as the cool kids say. Oh, stop. It means I have a personal assistant who helps me out at home. Oh, comma, and I use sticks to walk most days, comma, but some days I use a scooter, full stop. Scooter and stick fans are very welcome, full stop. God, this is boring. Wake up, select all, delete that. I'm really great, full stop. I do all my own stunts, full stop. I'm really great. I can get tired. Really tired. And it's painful. Ugh. Select all, delete that, go to sleep. So a couple of features, guys. Of course, the, digitally access, uh, the, the digital accessibility hub is fully accessible. Uh, we worked with uh, a variety of, of uh, disabled and neurodiverse users to get their feedback, both in terms of when we're writing the script, but also uh, what they thought about the final content. And, and here's one from somebody who themselves had MS, and here's what he had to say uh, about the accessibility hub. So, uh, so what did you think, your, your initial, initial reaction to the video? Loved it. It's the reveal. It's the, um, uh, I'm not of the generation of dating apps, um, uh, but, the, but in terms of the video, um, the reveal is is, is 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 and again I know you know it happens to be MS and and so I can so relate to this in terms of you know how I would like it to be you know I want to be seen as the person first mm. and then if it's relevant I want you to know that you know I've got a catheter and I'm in a wheelchair and I, I can't do this that and the other and I have spasms and. Like, you know all all the other stuff that needs to come out come out when it when it's needed to be, and that's exactly as it was portrayed with Rachel. I'm not I'm I'm not looking at this and going, oh, I wish Rachel was was dyslexic. And just some other things, guys, about the hub. So some of the things that we experimented with on the hub include um, accessibility customization. So for example, um, if you have the need for a high visibility background, you know you have the ability to change the the design of, of this, you know, to, to um, have more prominent uh, contrast. Um, as we speak, guys, um, and this award is, is recognition that actually we're, we've, we've got a product that we could potentially not just help and is helping our own people, but also other organizations and individuals. We're working really hard to make this publicly available so that anybody and any organization can, can learn from our experiences. We are by no means perfect, but we want to give away our expertise so that actually uh, things like websites, apps um, are accessible by default. We recognize that as a bank, we allow people to manage their finances and that's such an important pillar of independence. And also for our corporate customers, whether you're a corporate uh, customer of ours or an investment customer of ours, it means that any organization using our platforms because they're accessible means that their employees can come in and simply do their job. If you guys would like to find out more about the Accessibility Hub, or if you'd like to partner up with us or, or make yourselves uh, you know, available to our training, we, we'd love to share our knowledge and expertise with you. And once again, guys, before I finish, a massive thank you to the organizers and the judges for, for recognizing us. We feel very privileged and honored uh, to win a grand award uh, today. Thank you. Hello, let me share my screen.
画面表示されましたでしょうか。Do you see the screen? First of all, thank you for this opportunity.、Uh, we would like to talk about Shiseido Life Quality Makeup. I am the art director and belonging to the Shiseido Creative. My name is Shoko Shiota, and I am from Shiseido DI Strategy Promotion Group Brand Management.、Um, and my name is Kyoko Morita. Please enjoy the video. So, all these activities started in 1956 in the post World War II Japan. A lot of people suffered from burn scars, keloid. And we wanted to ease the mental suffering of these people. And that is why we came up with the cover dedicated foundation as part of the social contribution. And this also helps hide the blue and red bruise, vitiligo, scar marks. And also recently, it also helps people suffering from side effect, effects from tumor treatment. And this is the kind of thing that we do. Also, providing advice for free. And we have the Shiseido Life Quality Beauty Center in Japan, China, Taiwan, and Singapore. And it helps our people to be in a private room. And we provide with them some tips on doing makeups. And as you can see in the video, by making up yourself, you can also take care of your mental status. And we can also help change people's life. And this is what we believe to be the responsibility of a cosmetic manufacturer. And that's what we want to further. Develop. And as part of the products that support this,、um, these products have higher or better covering effects. And that's why we have the perfect cover, which is part of the base makeup products. And we use Shiseido's corporate color, the Camellia Red, for the logo. And the shape of the logo is an egg, pebble, or water drop like thing. And it tries to come up with a natural curve. And we try to show that we 
stand by each person and the egg color type color of the package also gives or brings gentleness we also have some guidebooks to help support people and we also provide counseling support the strength to be you and this is the promo word and in this way at Shiseido Life Quality Maker we want to continually see provide more support and more details can be found on our website so we encourage you to check our website this concludes Shiseido presentation thank you very much Okay, so I would like to start my presentation. Uh, this is a closing alteration service for people who have disabilities. Um, it is called Kiosk, and I'd like to talk about the service objective and the uh, service feature and the service uh, examples. My name is Maida. I am the representative of Kiosk. So I would like to first talk about the objective of service. Uh, Kiosk is a service um, to uh, resolve the challenge of uh, having few options to choose from when you have a physical disability. So um, there are many of uh, closing in the world, uh, but um, normally and people can use from what can choose what they like. But um, people who have physical disabilities, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, cannot um, Gent have to uh, decide uh, based on is it ease of where uh, there's a sense of preference. So we would like to uh, take away uh, this restriction of whether it is easy to use or not. Uh, so that because that's the first step for the uh, people with dis physical disabilities to choose a, a closing. Uh, but we wanted to get rid of this. So a kiosk is a service um, that enables the people with physical disabilities to. To, uh, decide how the, the book of clothing that they would like to wear without considering about whether it is easy to wear or not. And then uh, they will have an alteration so that they can wear uh, it easily. And this is service that they can request online. And this service is available from March uh, last year. And it's one year since we uh, have launched our service. And this is the characteristics of our service. Uh, there are three um, features uh, regarding our service. Number one is a menu, and uh, there are many options. Uh, so front opening t-shirt, uh, 1,650 yen, and uh, outerwear, um, rear opening is 2,200 yen, um, and the pants coach, uh, alteration, 2,750 yen. So it is uh, available in reasonable prices, and there are many options. So so the third uh, feature is that we have the alteration staff called CAST. They are mothers of the uh, physical um, dis disabled uh, children. Uh, so they can really relate uh, to the customers and they can image how they would like to uh, wear the clothing. And these uh, are located from Yamagata in the um, thousand part of Japan, uh, northern parts of Japan to southern part of Japan, and they're working online. Now I would like to uh, show some examples of the alteration service. Uh, this is an outerwear garment that was altered so that the sleeves could be opened with a zipper from the side. And the uh, customer is very happy because uh, they can wear this outerwear easily uh, while uh, sitting on the wheelchair. Uh, this is the alteration of school uniform. So they have changed the waist of the skirt uh, to elastic and it was very difficult to wear the uniform. So the uh, daughter had to wear gym clothing uh, to uh, go to the school, but now they can wear, uh, she can wear the uh, costume easily. Um, uh, this is a request from the uh, customer with Down syndrome and who have short arms and uh, the shortened uh, sleeve length of this uh, outerwear garment. And uh, the customer was very happy about this. Uh, they don't have to worry about what to wear in the winter anymore. Now, um, this is a soccer team uniform for cheering. Uh, a bit ridden customer had this um, uniform and uh, th th we had alteration so that they can uh, wear this easily and uh, cheer in the stadium. Uh, this is a suit. Uh, the mother had purchased this uh, with her own salary in the coming of this ceremony and she wanted uh, to uh, give this the, a suit to her severe mentally and physically disabled uh, daughter and she was very happy that she, the heart 
daughter is able to wear the suit, uh, which she had much memories. So that this is all regarding kiosk. So um, we are not aiming uh, for the uh, ease of use for older people, but we would like to make it easy, easy to uh, wear for people in front of us and uh, um, proving that we can grow in a healthy way and become uh, the foundation of the society where people can um, enjoy uh, spiritually enriching lives. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, start this. As you can see on the screen, uh, there's this white uh, color uh, underneath the um, upper layer kimono or the jacket type kimono. So in the color, there's the hook and you close it. And uh, you don't have to wear the uh, kimono type undergarment. And uh, regarding the um, upper part of the kimono, you use a hook and you just uh, uh, fix it on. So uh, this will be uh, very useful for the elderly patients or people who have some disabilities in the upper limb or vision. And the uh, lower part, this skirt, is like an apron. So if you don't, if you cannot um, put up your legs, uh, then uh, you can just uh, put a hook at the bottom uh, to fasten the uh, skirt uh, type uh, kimono. Even if your uh, muscles of the legs is not very strong, uh, we can uh, dress uh, the kimono in a way so that you don't have to open your legs. And uh, regarding the uh, sash, the obi, uh, you use the magic tape, uh, the velcro, uh, to put it on. So uh, you can uh, just pull the loop. And uh, this loop is uh, especially useful uh, for elderly and people with uh, disability in upper limbs or vision. Uh, because this can guide you uh, when you wear the uh, kimono. So the clothing that we wear is evolving every day, and kimono is also ever evolving as well. It is incorporating modern styles, and even though they, they are a traditional Japanese culture, we are pleased that many of the, uh, the uh, people who are watching today are from overseas. So I would like to uh, p p um, p pass on the Japanese culture to the rest of the world by providing a casual experience of wearing kimono to people from overseas. There are still many things uh, we have to accomplish, but we are determined to devise new ways to make it more convenient for all the people. So, and uh, we want to uh, make this opportunity to renew our commitment to our um, customers um, that uh, we are going to develop something um, that is uh, capable as a university. Um, does everyone see our screen being shared? Thank you. This is Takahashi from Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. Um, first of all, we would like to thank the organization for the award and everyone here is very happy. Now we would like to um, explain about our service, Melcare. So Melcare is a monitoring services for the elderly facility, and we use AI sensors. And in that way, we are being able to achieve natural monitoring. We have different sensors in the residence, and we are being able to check about the status of our residents from remote areas. Um, excuse me, could I release my screen share once? Apologies for this inconvenience. Is it better now? Thank you for waiting. So let me continue. So with the AI sensor technology, we are being able to come up with a natural way of monitoring, and this helps uh, lessen the burden of the staff 
and we are being able to have our staff to use their time for other services. So let us show you how this mail care system works in a short video clip. メルケアのご紹介高齢化が進む日本では65歳以上の人口か30%に迫っており2040年には35%を超えると予測されています介護現場の人材不足社会保障費の増加が今後ますます深刻な課題になっていきます 介護の現場では日々の清掃、配膳、バイタルチェックなど様々な業務をこなさなければなりません。ご入居者の様子を確認し、記録する業務の負荷も大きく、店頭時にすぐに駆けつけることが難しい場合もあります。三菱電機では施
At Fujitsu in 2020, we came up with the company purpose, which is to gain trust from society through innovation and make our world even more sustainable. And we want to become not just an only an ICT company, but to work on DX and change ourselves and work on social issues. And in October 2021, for us to come up with a new brand image, we have renewed our corporate visual identity, the VI, and for make, to make sure that it will be recognized by the global market, we have been using this in different touch points like the website, SNS events, and business cards. And we want to base on the corporate purpose as well as to put importance on diversity and inclusion. And first of all, this is the diversity-oriented color system. Of course, Fujitsu is known for the corporate color of red, but for us to make sure that we can include diversity, we have come up with 15 different color variations, region, culture, society, ethnicity, generation, industry, various themes have been included. And we also want to put importance on diversity and communication of each of the employees. So each person are being able to choose their favorite color. Second, we came up with a corporate font so that um, it allows more people to read letters easily. Sometimes the fonts are not easy to read and you get mixed up. That's why we carried out various user tests to be considerate for the uh, for people with dyslexia and we also listened to the advice of experts and came up with the Fujitsu Infinity Pro font. Third thing we did with the VI is to come with an easy or sound color combination in the accessibility. Sometimes when we look at websites or PowerPoint materials or slide decks, um, it's difficult to read the letters because of the lower color contrast. So that's why we decided to use only black and white for the characters. And at the same time, we refer to the WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and um, also listen to some experts so that um, the PowerPoint slide decks that we use internally will be much easier to read. And we are in this way trying to make sure that uh, materials used in the company are accessibility friendly. And let me show you some um, demo here. So we have these color palettes using Fujitsu original tool. And we have 15 different patterns, and in this way, the color palette tool will help you to come up with good combination of colors with better contrast. And we have our affiliates and associates to install this tool so we can come up with a better accessible material. And the last one is the subtitles, because I myself am one of these uh, persons who need uh, the help of subtitles. And that's why we want to make sure all the um, videos or video clips we use in Fujitsu will have 100% of subtitles. And uh, we have a global event called Fujitsu Activate Now, where we have already achieved 100% of subtitle service offerings. And in this way, this, not, this is not just only for people with hearing difficulties, but also helps other people to have better accessibility. And we at Fujitsu, we are basing on our corporate purpose, and at the same time, we have put emphasis on diversity and inclusion. This is how we would like to contribute um, to social, the better society. And I myself have been helped or oh, supported a lot with these technology. So we want to change the impossible to something possible. Thank you very much for listening.
すみません。Thank you. あ、こんばんは。えっと、私は。Hello, everyone. ソウルユニバーサルデザインセンターのセンター長である。So I am the head of the Seoul Universal Design Center. My name is c h e l y o n And first of all, I would like to thank IAUD. Selection Committee and the Secretariat for this award because,、um, with, together with the Seoul Metropolitan Government,、uh, we believe that this has been a big honor. And I hope people can hear my voice. Yes, we hear you. And we have、um, the staff of the Seoul Universal Design Center and also people from the Seoul Metropolitan Government joining here. And I would like to be representing my team members to talk about the UD Online Library project. Before I elaborate about the project,、um, let me briefly tell you about the universal design related initiatives carried out by the city of Seoul.、Um, Seoul is known for a human centric city and it cares for people with vulnerability. And universal design has been one of the main initiatives、um, of the municipal government. And that is why, in fact, the municipal government does have a dedicated team working on universal design initiatives. And、um, we also have established the Seoul Universal Design Center, and、uh, we are being consigned、um, various tasks. And we carry out promotion and initiatives of universal design, which will be growing even bigger. So, this Universal Design Online Library has been an update of the guidelines that we have had in the past. In the past,、uh, we only had a booklet、um, of the guides which limited accessibility. And that means all we were able to do is to do printing. And every time there has been changes, we were not able to make Adequate updates of the guideline on universal design. And at the same time, we thought that we should be able to share this in different medias like in smartphones and also solve the issue of accessibility. That is why we decided to come up with a web database guide. So these are more details about the project. Because the、um, related laws and regulations are changing from time to time, and we also wanted to add, for example, various formats to help people out and allow people to have direct access from their computers and from smartphones and tablets. And at the same time, we also came up、uh, with a separation of Illustrations and text so that the text um, um, can be translated quickly. And that's how we try to enhance the convenience of the users. The picture on the right side shows a basic layout of the website. And for more details, please try to access the URL below and see how it's like. These guidelines have to be accurate and、uh, Be communicating to many people, and that's why we are also trying to use a lot of illustrations. And as you can see on the right bottom,、uh, we are using related services. We also have YouTube videos available, we also have、um, translation services, and also OCR. For example, this shows the parking system of Seoul, and we are now trying to revise the information of the parking systems. And in the near future, We also want to bring in universal design guideline for public housing. s And that's the kind of information we plan to add on. And we hope that the case study of Seoul, City of Seoul will help other cities. Of course, it can't be applied 100%, but at least we want to be of help. Again,、um, the web based guideline of the City of Seoul and Universal Design Center 
has been something that uh, we wanted to share with you and hereby I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. So this Ekimato project, so uh, this is a joint collaboration between JR East and DNP and Fujitsu, and there is a school. Uh, um, so um, the, for the people of Fukien and here and uh, he, uh, hearing impediments. So there are many people who are commuting by trains because they don't live close to the uh, school. So how can they enjoy uh, every day, uh, living every day more? And how can we support them uh, community, commuting to school? So, and we talked with the students and tr tried to come up with ideas. So uh, they have this request um, that, that they would like to see the announcement in the text. And there are some uh, students who said that um, they would like to see it in sign language, if the sign language is easier for them. And uh, they are saying that um, they would like to have a ramp uh, that coming out of their door. And if there's some strange person, uh, there's a capsule coming down from the uh, uh, ceiling. Um, so uh, there are so many much ideas. And I do want to uh, end this as an idea. And that this is the reason why we came up with this, Akimatopia.子供たちが何を学ぶかということについてはですね、自分たちが世の中社会のために何を考えて実現することが実際にあるんだということがきっかけとして人生を生きるのではないかなと思います。駅には放送以外にもさまざまな音が溢れているので、駅マトペを見て
they happen to just uh, see the uh, equipment appear uh, during their commuting times, uh, but then they became uh, interested in the hearing impairment and they are changing their behavior. And I was very happy about that. So the things like equipment appear uh, may help raise awareness uh, regarding the uh, dis disability or people will respect uh, the difference of other people more and people can accept uh, the difference of other people and uh, if, we can, if we can live their own lives uh, i'll be very happy so that's the kind of design i would like to develop uh, so i would like to continue so to such activity so that this society can accept diversity more